Hi, everybody. Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, The Five Must-Have Capabilities in Criticism. My name is Jeannie Liu, and I'll be the moderator today. Our speaker is Rob Kwok, co-founder and CTO of Criticism. Before we get started, there's a few housekeeping items. If you have any technical difficulties, there's a chat window, and we will be moderating that. We'll also have a live Q&A session at the end. Please enter your questions in the WebEx Q&A box, and Rob will get to as many as he can. Uh, today's session will be recorded, and we'll follow up with a video on demand. And finally, we'll have a drawing for the iPad Air. Please wait until the end to qualify. So with that, let's turn it over to Rob and get started. Thanks, Jeannie. I'm um, excited to talk to you guys today. Uh, we're going to talk about five must-have performance capabilities in criticism. So first, a um, you know, little background on the company. Um, we have about 20,000 apps that are, you know, we're currently monitoring. Um, we operate at an immense scale. We have about a billion monthly active users that we, we that we monitor, and you know, we track about 50 billion app launches per month. And we work, you know, in, a, in 120 different countries on various devices. Um, you know, we're excited about the, the Apple Watch launch yesterday, and we have we'll plan to have support for that uh, as well. Um, so, you know, many of you are familiar with uh, with the product today. Um, just to give an overview, um, you know, we have support for both, you know, error monitoring, so looking at uh, crashes, handling. Uh, so what I want to talk about was just zone in on five kind of the what we're calling the must-have uh, capabilities of criticism. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about one of the new features that we just launched in beta a couple weeks ago called transaction management, and then I'll cover two topics that are um, you know a lot of you are probably using. This, these are two uh, key features that. A lot on the error monitoring side that a lot of our customers use and find a lot of value. I'll talk about uh, a few key ways that you know you can use it and a few stories from our customers. I'll talk about uh, service management, so looking at all the network requests that your app sends. I'll talk about some of the ways people are using that, um, how people are using geolocation as well. And then I'll talk about our executive iPad app um, that can give you a high-level dashboard across all of, all of these metrics. So I want to start off and talk about transaction management. Um, you know, the way we define a transaction, talking to a lot of our customers, it's, it's really a, a set of user interactions that lead to some kind of business outcome. Um, we found that it, it doesn't matter across what industry your app operates on. Um, every app has a transaction that uh, companies track today. And you know, typically, what we found, you know, talking to our customers, um, you know, a typical transaction could be anything from an in-app in purchase, um, in an e-commerce app, or you know, any kind of app that has in-app purchases, to things like sign-up, login, um, that people are already tracking for more from an analytics perspective, but they don't, they don't really have any idea uh, how often those are failing because of a, a performance issue. Uh, but it's not only limited to transactions like that. Um, data syncing, we found, is a huge issue. Uh, we talked to a bunch of uh, healthcare startups, for example, or, or um, social media startups, where data syncing is a, a huge part of the, the value of their app, and that's a transaction that they love to trace. And as well as, you know, in the B2E case, you know, if, you're, if you have an app that's, you know, if you're checking inventory, if you're adding, uh, uh, if you're entering orders for something, if you're doing barcode scans, uh, these are all types of transactions that you really see in, in the B2E market as well. And I think the most common one that we've heard the most uh, from our customers is, you know, how long it takes for your app to load. And this is not only, you know, foreground and background, but also, you know, cold starts and warm starts. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how our customers are using this. 
So, you know, why are these transactions so important? Um, companies are already tracking these from a uh, kind of a funnel tracking perspective, but really all these, every app has a transaction and, and you look at three metrics when you're evaluating the success of your mobile app. You know, the first is, you know, revenue. Uh, how much money is your, is your app generating? And often the question that people don't have an answer to today is, you know, how often does a sale get lost due to a performance issue? And that's something that uh, transactions can really help with. Uh, the second is adoption. You know, our users, I talked a little bit about sign up and login. Are you losing new users because um, they tried to sign up and the app crashed or it sent a network request and it couldn't complete that uh, login transaction or that account registration transaction? And the last is engagement. Um, you know, I talked a little bit about app load time, but we found that uh, metrics like application load time often is heavily correlated with user engagement. And we've had many customers tell us that, um, and that's a metric that they track today very closely. Because if it, you know, if your app takes a long time to load, people get frustrated, they'll stop using your app. And so I have a few screenshots here, but I thought I could also walk through a, a live demo of, uh, of transactions here. So what you're seeing here are basically your, your transaction dashboard. Um, if you specified uh, some transactions that you're tracking in your app, uh, we also allow you to correlate those with revenue numbers. So as you're adding items to a shopping cart, for example, and you're tracking a, a checkout operation, you can tie those transactions back to revenue. And we highlight that metric here front and center in your app. So you can tell if there's any revenue loss in your app due to a transaction that, that failed for whatever reason. And we, we track failure rate in a couple different ways. We can track if the app crashed during, a, during that transaction. We can track if, um, the, if the transaction took too long and timed out. Or we can also track you know, if a network request was sent and that transaction failed to complete. Those all count as failed transactions that we can track. And anytime those transactions fail, we can tell you right away what the revenue impact of, of that uh, failed transaction is. Um, looking into these graphs, uh, we can see that in this case, there's uh, the app just launched in the App Store. Uh, the checkout transaction was the one that was uh, spiking, and maybe there's a problem with that. And we give you a full breakdown by all these transactions as well. So you can sort right now, sort it by volume, but let's go ahead and sort this by revenue risk. So you can see right away that the checkout transaction is the transaction that's causing this huge spike in, in revenue risk in your app. So let's drill down into that transaction. You can tell right away that there's you know, a drop in the success rate and you can debug you know, what was the cause of that, that drop in success in this transaction. And we break down those three failure cases I talked about earlier. If the app crashed during a transaction, if it timed out, or maybe a network request failed and that transaction was aborted. Uh, looking at the graph here on the right, we can see that the crash, the crash rate in this transaction has you know, spiked up in the last 10 minutes, so maybe this is something we should look at. And this is where we tie into the rest of our product. Uh, we can see that every single uh, transaction that failed, uh, in this case due to a crash, we can tell exactly which crashes were affecting that transaction. So we're sorting by the number of crashes with, that occurred within that transaction here. And we, if we click on this crash, we can get you know, the exact details of that crash. What was the stack trace? What were the diagnostics? What was it running on? And, but maybe that's not enough. Maybe we want to also see um, all the users that specifically had this crash. And we can do that by looking at this transaction trace tab. This is where we can see all the specific users that have, have experienced the failure in this transaction. We can see you know, the revenue risk on that particular user in that particular transaction, how long it took in order for that transaction to fail, and we can also see exactly what was uh, the user doing um, leading up to that transaction failing. So in this case, they switched from LTE to Edge. Um, they tried to get a, a list of inventory. We can see all the network requests here. And then you know, they tried to add an item to the shopping cart, and because their internet failed, um, when they tried to check out in the app, that's when the app crashed. So this is really you know, giving you detailed you know, metrics for how this application failed, and you can go back and debug this issue right away. So you know, just to sum up uh, on transactions, um, we found out that you know, it's, it applies to every single use case. So I'd like to talk about a few you know, key use cases here. Um, you know, in the e-commerce space, it's pretty obvious. Um, I talked about a checkout example right uh, in my demo, 
But there's all sorts of other transactions that uh, companies want to track. So this could be anything from you know a product search to adding an item in a shopping cart to that in-app purchase that, uh, that I just covered. Um, but this is also true in the, in the finance space. This is where we've seen a lot of um, excitement. And part of that is um, there's a lot of metrics that finance companies, um, you know, brokerages, for example, track a metric called quote to purchase. This is the, you know, the time it takes from when a user is thinking about purchasing a stock to actually purchasing it. And that's a metric that, you know, executive teams tend to, to track very closely. And they really don't have any tools to track that for, for mobile. Um, and it's not just you know uh, trans transactions in uh, in, fi in um, brokerage apps. It could be any kind of finance app where money transfer is a, a big one. Failed payments is also a big one. Um, so finance is a great place to, to add transactions. And you know in media and social, um, this could be anything that uh, that that's geared towards engagement because that's some of the metrics that they track. So anything from how long it takes for a video or an article to load, um, you know, how long it takes for data to sync, uh, to how long it takes to send and receive messages. And there's some transactions that really track across all verticals. So uh, how long it takes to load an app um, as a new user, that's what we call cold start time, is something that a lot of companies track very closely because it's tied to uh, conversion rates when users start in an app to warm start times. So this is loading an app when you put it in the background and you want it to load it again from the background. And of course, you know, login is another great one. So I'd like to jump to a couple of the features that um, you know current customers are using very heavily in um, uh, for error monitoring. So the first one is is breadcrumbs. Um, so a lot of the times we we provide a stack trace when there's downtime and uh, when you're investigating a downtime issue in your app, you can look at the stack trace and see what's going on. But a lot of the times, you know, a stack trace really isn't enough to see what was, uh, what happened to reproduce that issue. So we have a feature called breadcrumbs, and this is one of the most widely used features um, across all of our paid customers. And this really allows you to replay what a user was doing leading up to a performance issue. So you can see exactly what network requests were sent, what views were loaded, what buttons were clicked, or maybe when a, a variable value was changed. It's very customizable, so you can basically log any type of message to us. Um, and you know, we found that a lot of the times it's really useful in cases where a, you look at a stack trace and it tells you what line of code caused the problem, but not how exactly how to reproduce it. And so there could be stack traces that could seem you know, uh, very confusing to a lot of users, and a lot of developers have complained about a stack trace not being enough to debug a crash. And they've really found that with breadcrumbs, it really saves them a lot of time reproducing these issues. And the last thing is that a lot of these crashes are actually caused by a failed network call that you know won't show up in a stack trace, but uh, would make a lot of sense when you're reproducing that issue. So let's jump into a quick demo on uh, a use case of, of, of breadcrumbs. So here I'm looking at a crash that occurred um, in an app. And you know we're seeing that through the stack trace that there's some resizing of a, of a rectangle in a in a window, and you know this could happen in anywhere in the app, and it really doesn't give enough information to debug what was going on. If we look at all the other threads that are running at the time, uh, we can we don't really see anything else that really jumps at at you. Uh, it was sending a network request, but we don't know what that network request was. So this is a great case where you know breadcrumbs can really solve an issue. So if we jump to this breadcrumbs tab, uh, we can tell that the user you know, loaded this app. So this is for one particular user that had um, this crash. Uh, you can see this is where they loaded the app. This is when the application finished launching. Uh, we can tell that they, they're probably using some sort of um, analytics provider that sent a request. Um, this is probably unrelated since uh, the, the user kept being able to continue um, in the application. So they logged in, they got a list of inventory, uh, the, the, the loading of the inventory worked, um, they searched for Lady Gaga, um, they clicked on the search button, they sent the search request, and then when that request was sent, that's when the application crashed. So in this case, you know, there's probably an issue where um, you can actually go back and give to the QA team exactly the steps to reproduce this issue. You know exactly which device, which OS, which app uh, version of the app they're running, 
And you can put this into a JIRA issue um, by clicking you know, Create Issue if you integrated with our, with our JIRA integration here and file exactly the repro steps to, to fix that, uh, that issue. And what's great is that we capture all of these network requests automatically. And you can actually drill in and look at this network request, see exactly you know, what was sent, what was the latency of the request, did it fail or not, and how many bytes were sent with that request. And so this gives you all the information to go back and debug exactly what happened uh, during that issue. So just to, to summarize on breadcrumbs, um, this is great for fixing issues that you really had trouble debugging. You know, as I showed in that stack trace, um, it's really not clear what was the root cause of that issue. Uh, we know that it, it occurred in that line of code where a window is being resized. But we don't actually know, you know how to reproduce that issue. It could have occurred anywhere in the app. And by having the stack trace, uh, we are able to save a lot of QA time. Uh, we could actually have exactly what steps were used to recreate that issue, which device it was running on, which version of the app it was running on. And finally, you know, in this case, uh, a network request was potentially uh, tied to that issue. So if you saw a network request fail, uh, we capture all those automatically in what we call network breadcrumbs. So you can actually see um, all this data to give you the information to fix all of these issues. Um, next, the next feature I like to talk about is, is crash trends. Um, I call this kind of the, the show your boss screen for a lot of, uh, a lot of these metrics. And what it's really helped with is, you know, one, it's, it's great as, a, as an analytics tool, so you can track adoption uh, in terms of new users. But really the power of this is really having real data to track the success of your engineering team. So with each release of your app, you can see uh, hard data on how well your app is improving over time. And you can also, since we break down all this data by operating system and by device, it can also help you plan your roadmap. And I'll talk a little bit about what that means. So let me jump uh, back to a demo of the product. So here we're looking at um, a trend of all high-level metrics in your app across uh, 30, 30 days of data. Um, you can tell that you know, basic metrics like daily active users and monthly active users. Um, but the graph here that a lot of companies use is this percentage of app loads that crashed by version. Um, so you can see there's about five different versions of the app here. Um, a lot of them, you know, uh, if you look at 7.0 or 6.2, they're all hovering around the 5 or 6% uh, app range, uh, crash rate range. And then if you look down here, uh, if we hide those, we can actually see the latest version of the app, uh, whoops, sorry, which is uh, 7.0.2. And we can see that, wow, they've made a vast improvement to the, to the crashes. Um, the crash rate of their app. What started off as being between 5 and 6% in, in this version actually went from uh, to 0.21%. So this is a, a, a huge improvement in their app. And if we look at what happened, uh, we can correlate this with a lot of the other graphs that we show here. So uh, what happened here? So we're looking at um, you know the adoption rate across new versions of their app. And we can tell that in 7.0.1, um, they you know, they, they recently released an upgrade to their app on July 17th. And as new users were using the new latest version of their app, we can see that there's been a corresponding decrease in the number of crashes. So we can, just by looking at these two graphs alone, we can tell that the latest of the version of their app actually fixed a lot of their issues. So this is a great graph that you could show. A lot of companies show this in, in board meetings to their executive team, to their, uh, to their board of directors. Um, this is hugely powerful because uh, a lot of uh, companies spend a lot of time putting the top 10 issues of, of crashes into their um, into two-week sprints and fixing issues, and you can you can tell that some of them are fixed. But this really gives you a, a real metric for seeing um, how well those improvements are making an impact on your application. And if you scroll down here to the bottom of the screen, this is where you can do roadmap planning. Uh, we break down the same kind of metrics by OS and by device. And we found that for a lot of, a lot of the times when a new operating system or a new device gets loaded, um, a lot of apps, um, you know, either haven't tested for that latest version or um, they've deprecated functionality in an older version that a lot of customers are still using that can cause a lot of issues. And companies typically, you know, test on 
um, newer devices, your development teams using newer devices. A lot of times you don't know uh, if, your, if your app is failing on an older device. And so this is what you can tell right away. Uh, for instance, you can see on the iPad mini, which came out uh, recently, that there's a lot of uh, the, the crash rate in this version of your of the device was actually much higher than all the other versions um, that your customer base is using. So maybe this is an area that you should focus your engineering team to to work on, especially because um, this is the this is the device. You know, looking at this graph over here, the number of uploads by device that's the highest in demand. So maybe you should go back and and look at all the crashes that are occurring on this particular device. And the same thing holds for operating system as well. So, you know, iOS 8 was just launched recently. Uh, a lot of developers, um, you know, don't have great test coverage for iOS 8. And you can see, um, you, by looking at these graphs, you can tell, you know, what's your adoption rate across iOS 8 and how, and you can see real-time metrics for how well uh, your app is functioning on that new uh, OS that people are rapidly adopting. And especially this is great for the case of Android, where there's a, a multitude of different devices. We've had a lot of customers actually uh, decide not to support certain versions of the OS or certain, or certain devices just because um, you know, that device doesn't have as much memory uh, and maybe that uh, device isn't getting as great adoption as, you, as the other devices and it's not worth spending development time to, to support that device. So by combining you know, metrics on usage as well as performance here, you can make those types of decisions on what you should do. So just to summarize, um, you know, it's great for tracking adoption. So you can see in real time you know, how many monthly active users, how many daily active users. Um, daily active users is a great uh, short-term metric and a monthly is a great uh, longer-term metric. Um, for measuring you know, engineering success, so we talked about the crash rate of your app and comparing version to version, how well performance is increasing. And so this gives a great metric for benchmarking your team. Um, a lot of our customers have used this as um, you know, OKRs or KPIs for their, for their development teams to hit, um, you know, always improving the crash rate of your app. And you know, the, line, the last thing is it really can give you the tools and the data to help you plan your roadmap. So you can see you know, as a new device, as a new operating system comes online, how are your users adopting it? Um, how is the performance occurring on those devices? Or maybe you know, as you're developing a new version of your app, you, maybe you've you know, neglected a, an older version of a device or an older version of an OS that your customers are still using, but you simply haven't tested on. And it gives you the, the data to decide, you know, should I stop supporting that old device, should I stop supporting that app version, or, you know, should I actually spend a lot of time because 20% of my user base is still on this iPad mini. Um, and I'd like to talk also now on the fourth uh, must-have, which is uh, cloud service management. So uh, a lot of companies, you know, are tracking crashes. Um, that makes a lot of sense to a lot of customers. But what they're not thinking about is all the external uh, dependencies that your, that your app has. So what do I mean by cloud service? A cloud service is really something external that an app depends on. Um, it could be an analytics SDK, it could be an ad provider, it could be a CDN, it could be, or it could be even your, your company's own API. So you know, some examples of this are a lot of companies use you know, Facebook or Twitter when they're logging into an app. Or uh, if, the, if you want to, um, you know, tweet out a link to your app, if you want to share data, uh, that's a lot. That occurs a lot in the social uh, apps that we that we support. Um, a lot of companies use a lot of ad services. So if you're using a service like AdMob, that's a, a, another dependency. Um, you know, a lot of companies host their backend infrastructure on AWS or or Akamai uh, as a as a CDN, um, and that can cause a lot of dependencies. And a lot of companies use analytics SDK, so it could be anything from Google Analytics to, to Flurry to Mixpanel. And a lot of those can, uh, can cause unexpected dependencies in your app. And why is it so important? Um, a lot of people don't think about this, but your app you know, isn't just dependent on the code that, you're, that, that is running that your development team developed. But depending on six, often you know, according to our data, six or more services. Um, and, We've seen that a lot of companies, even more established companies, have 
just simply thrown in multiple SDKs into the app, not thinking about the consequences. And what and it really makes it's really important in mobile because you're operating under these really constrained hardware and software conditions, uh, where memory is very important, battery life is very important. And you're also sharing a lot of uh, network traffic, so it can slow down your app by adding a lot of these services to your app. And I'll talk a little bit about this, but you know, a lot of these services can, can actually bring down your mobile app and cause downtime. So let me jump to a, a demo and show you uh, what I mean. So what you're seeing here are, is a view into our app performance data, looking at all the, uh, the network requests that are sent. Um, uh, with our SDK, we, we try to make it as easy as possible to use and get up and running. So, you know, if you're using version 4.0 and higher of our SDK, we actually track all of these. Um, uh, you can enable tracking for all of these network services right away. So what you're seeing here is um, we automatically detect and also profile the performance of all of these services that your app is using, and we tell you right away if there's an issue. And we show you this data separated by four main metrics here. So latency, which is basically the amount of time from your request being sent to being a request uh, a response received by your app. Uh, the error rate, so this encompasses not only uh, 400s or 500 responses you get from a server, but also device level errors. So if you couldn't connect to the internet, you couldn't connect to DNS. Um, and when we also track, you know, the amount of requests that were sent as well as the amount of data that was being sent in and out of your device. And simply sorting this by latency, um, you can tell right away if there's a certain service that's uh, affecting your app. And we've had cases where, you know, we were working with a $100 billion financial services company and they actually found out that a developer had added this analytics SDK to their application it was causing uh, huge latencies in their app and it was actually causing downtime. And just by looking at this data, they were able to have that data to take out uh, that pushback on, um, on their team and take out that SDK right away and stop a lot of the downtime issues in their app. And you can take each one of these services and actually drill down to all the specific endpoints um, that were occurring. And some, and some endpoints might be very important in your app. So in this case, you know, we're looking at um, this add to cart uh, uh, add to cart network request in your application, and you know we can tell the same breakdown here by latency, error rate, data in, um, and request volume, but also a breakdown by carrier. So we've seen, especially um, for a checkout kind of uh, or uh, purchase trend, uh, network requests, a lot of carriers actually build, uh, block these billing endpoints. And we've seen this especially internationally. And a lot of customers were surprised seeing this data and seeing that some amount of carriers were actually blocking these endpoints and causing these uh, failures um, in checkout in their application. And we can actually drill down and see specifically what errors uh, were caused here. So we, as I was talking about earlier, we can not only see you know, 400s or 500s from a server, but we can also tell if um, you know it couldn't connect to a host, if the certificate was bad, if it couldn't connect to a DNS, and this has been you know huge for a lot of companies that you know are using server-side monitoring tools. Uh, we had a customer, uh, a payment provider that you know had launched their app in the UK, and they were you know trying. They found out that their trans all of these uh, network requests were failing. And they had uh, you know, a server-side monitoring tool, um, and it didn't tell them anything. And finally, you know, they realized that you know, it was because their server was being overloaded. Network requests weren't even getting hit on their server. And only by looking at this data were they able to tell that there was an issue with this, uh, with this endpoint in their application. And we can also break this down by geolocation as well. Uh, so we, you can see the same breakdown by the services that your app is using and the, and the endpoints, but you can actually drill down into each particular um, country here and down to the, the state level, and you can actually drill down all the way down to the county level. And this is really important for a lot of, uh, of retailers in particular. So if, you're, if you have an app that's being used, you know, for example, Urban Outfitters is using um, uh, iPads as, as registers uh, uh, in their stores. So you can actually tell right away if there's a particular store that has an issue and compare um, you know, different stores in different areas and see if there's a, a wide issue or if it's just contained to that region. 
And you know, another great example here is um, one of our payment providers. They launched their app in the UK, and they found out that for um, you know, this was before they were using their, our product. Um, they had an issue where all of their uh, payments were not being processed, or there was a huge latency, and they had no idea what was going on. And finally, um, they spent three months of development time trying to pinpoint the issue, and they finally realized that it was literally a steel bridge that was blocking communication between uh, their application and their server. And when, they, when we, we gave them this data, they said, wow, we could have really used this three months ago to help us debug that issue. So um, just to summarize, um, you know, service monitoring is a great tool for monitoring endpoints um, in your application. Oh, the last thing I wanted to mention was um, you can also set alerts on any of these endpoints. So if you had, for example, this add to cart operation that was really critical for your business, you can actually hover over this graph here, click on this alert icon, and you can actually get uh, an SMS or a, an email notification if the error rate of this endpoint, if the latency of this endpoint is uh, above a certain threshold. And, we, and this is also very detailed as well, so you can actually specify you know, if it's only occurring on the latest version of your app, or if you only want to limit it to a certain device or a certain carrier because that was uh, really important to your business, you could, you could set up alerts that way. So very granular in terms of uh, what you can do here. Great, and then the last thing I wanted to, to show you is um, our iPad app. Uh, so we launched this early uh, January of this year. Um, and you know, I was talking a little bit about the Crash Trends um, uh, product or that earlier, giving you high-level metrics. And uh, our iPad app is really kind of the, the ultimate show your boss screen. So you know, we're, this is a product that's great for uh, product owners, for executives in your team to really give you an at-a-glance view across all the apps um, in your portfolio and see how well each of those are performing. So there's you know, four main metrics that you can see right away. So your mobile uptime across all your applications gives you, uh, you know, a high-level perspective on how well your mobile strategy is performing and if you need to spend more time fixing issues versus um, you know, debugging uh, uh, versus creating new features. We also tie into your, your ratings in the App Store, so that's a metric a lot of companies track to tell uh, the health of their applications, how well uh, the, the user experiences of the application. And then finally, we have some you know, uh, engagement and, and user adoption metrics, so daily active users here and monthly active users. And we can trend these all over time and see you know, how well these are, uh, these are changing month over month. And we can actually give you a breakdown if you want to see you know, each of your apps. And we break it down to four different categories. Um, you know, looking at data from our, uh, our mobile, state of the mobile report, we found that you know, the average crash rate is you know, around the 1% to 2% level. So we've grouped those according to these metrics that we found um, a lot of companies can hold their teams responsible for. So we say you know, an app is, is great if it's less than 1% uh, downtime here. So there's about five apps here that have great stability. Um, and then for apps that are you know, less than 2%, we say these are critical apps that you really need to look, to look at. And then for everything in between uh, that you, know, you might want to look at is uh, between 98 and 99% uptime. And so what you can do here is actually drill into one of these critical apps that you need to, to fix. So let's drill into the, the app center here. And we can give you kind of the same metrics on a per app basis. So you can see, you know, what was the uh, uptime of, of this application across the last 30 days. And you can tell in this case that there's been a huge drop, so maybe this is a problem in the app. And we can see, not surprisingly, there's been a corresponding drop to the ratings of my application. So th this went down by about 30%. And we can see that you know the current rating of the app store is you know three out of five. Um, you know across our customer base, we see the average uh, around the four uh, four star mark. So this is uh, this is not great for this application. And you know and this correlates with all the other information here as well. We can see that because there's been more downtime, there's been less uh, a lower rating of the app. There's been less usage of the app as well. So there's less you know, daily active users. There's less monthly active users. And this is really something that you know can be causing a problem. 
And we can also drill into a breakdown by app version, so we can see if there's been a, a corresponding drop. We can see in the latest version it has the has a really bad downtime. Uh, we can see it broken down by carrier. So if you had just launched your app um, in the in in Asia, for example, and uh, maybe a carrier was causing slowdowns in your app that you, your app hadn't accounted for. Uh, that's a strategic decision that you need to make about you know, whether to invest more resources, resources fixing that issue for that carrier. And you can tell if there's a, a specific device or a specific operating system that, um, that that's a problem here. And you can go ahead and sort this by, by downtime here. And we can see that you know, on Android 4.4.3, in this case, which is, has a significant number of users, um, that's that's a problem here, and and this also gives you a way to uh, to take action on on these issues. So if we go back to the metrics screen here, and we hit this email icon, it'll actually take a screenshot uh, of this page. And this is something you can go back and you know talk to your your product manager, talk to your engineering lead, and say, hey, this is a real issue. Have we looked at um, you know can we increase the number of bugs each sprint that we spend working on this issue? Can we stop new feature development and focus on fixing these issues because less people are using it? It's core to my strategy for my company, and um, you know this is something we need to fix right away. And you can also see, you know, a list view is here as well. So if there's a more important app here, we can sort this by, you know, usage as well as uptime. And if there's a certain app here that you, you need to fix, um, you can tell right away if, you know, how well your strategy is doing. So, you know, the last thing I want to bring up, um, sort of as a, a bonus must have, is I wanted to give a shout out to our, our support team. So we just launched our community uh, last month. And um, you know we've had some great uh, adoption there, but you know we also offer we have a great uh, knowledgeable support team. Uh, I work with them very closely, and actually ran uh, actually was our first support guy you know three years ago. And you know we've devoted a lot of time on support, and we have great expertise there. And if you need more support on an ongoing basis, um, you can email our support team, and you'll be able to get a very uh, strong technical response uh, right away. So with that, I uh, wanted to wrap up and uh, you know take any questions. Um, I also wanted to plug our transactions, uh, which is in beta right now. Um, you can go up to the website and go to criticism.com slash solutions slash transactions and sign up for the beta there. So with that, um, I'd like to take any, any questions you guys have. Okay, so the first question I have here is, typically mobile apps interface with enterprise systems within the enterprise. Are there ways within criticism to isolate performance issues between mobile apps and enterprise systems? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, a lot of the times, um, these are great issues that a lot of our enterprise customers, especially, um, you know, is top of mind for them. And you know, transactions is and that's why we design transactions as a way to to track these interfaces between enterprise systems and and our and um, and their mobile apps. Um, you know, one of the great ways we can do that is through through traces. So being able to see all the user interactions that led up to a performance issue, you can see all of the network requests that were called, um, all of the user interactions that led up to a trace. You can see all the service calls that were sent to these backend systems, and it's a great way to tie, you know, end to end, looking at, you know, what what caused these issues. And a lot of the times, you know, it is occurred, it is caused by, uh, you know, connectivity issues with an enterprise system. Um, it could be caused by, um, you know, changes to the way data is being stored or changes to an API. And you know, transactions is a great way to kind of tie those two together to to see if there are performance issues. Great, thanks, Rob. Uh, second question we have here is: You automatically create a breadcrumb, is that right? From the programmer's viewpoint, what do we need to implement for breadcrumbs to be usable? That's a great question, and um, uh, so there's a couple different ways we can actually use breadcrumbs. So, 
we do capture a lot of breadcrumbs automatically. So for all those network requests that I was showing, um, those are all actually captured automatically. So you don't actually need to add any code to your app um, if you just simply use you know, version 4.0 and, and above the SDK, you'll get all of those, those breadcrumbs automatically. Um, that being said, we also uh, are adding uh, some additional uh, automatic breadcrumbs. So for transactions, when I was talking about changes to, to network state, when an app is backgrounded or foregrounded, um, you know, talking to customers, we found that those are the most often reasons why an app will, will crash or a transaction will fail. And so, uh, starting with transactions, we'll, we'll also be able to automatically capture those uh, those uh, those breadcrumbs as well. And we also want to retain you know, uh, some flexibility as well. So, any breadcrumbs that uh, any any event that you also want to log automatically, um, you can you can also have the flexibility to add those yourself as well. Oh, the last thing is um, uh, when a view is loaded, we also track those automatically as breadcrumbs as well. Uh, oh, and uh, another question, I guess, was, is there any limit on the number of breadcrumbs? Um, so breadcrumbs are limited by uh, the last 100 events. We'll also store the, uh, the first event so you can tell when, in this, when a user session started to give you some context. And then from that, we, we track the, the last 100 breadcrumbs. And it's, uh, it's also a revolving queue. So, uh, you know, we take pride not being able to affect the performance of your app in any way. So we're not storing all the breadcrumbs, we're not sending them right away. Uh, we only send them when there is a performance issue, and we also only uh, uh, cache the last 100 breadcrumbs that occurred as well. Great, one more question here. Some companies are saying that they don't need to inject code into the customers. How do I deal with that? Oh, so that's a great question. Um, so if you don't have access to source code, um, you know, we have a bunch of enterprise companies that are in the same boat. Uh, we released a feature called app wrapping. Um, I didn't cover that today, but basically that's a technology that allows you to take uh, an, IP, an, an IPA file, basically a compiled app, uh, as right before you're about to release it to the App Store. And you can upload it on our website, and we can actually you know, in, inject our code directly without having to add any code, return that to you. You can re-sign it and then resubmit it to the App Store. Great. Uh, one question regarding service monitoring. Are there facilities, APIs available to view service monitoring across apps for the same service, such as Facebook, by an app provider? Sorry. Uh, are there facilities, APIs? Yeah, so, you know, we did release, um, you know, part of what we want to do is also give back to the, the community and look at um, you know, how, how certain APIs are being affected across applications. Um, so, you know, we, we just released the state of the mobile report that talks about the different services uh, apps use, and it actually benchmarks each one of these services and tells you if there's a specific latency that's occurring um, you know, across, that's common across multiple apps. So you can tell, you know, and this will give you some data to benchmark, um, you know, how your uh, performance of your, you know, calls to Facebook, a CDN, or, you know, any sort of service compares to other applications. And this is something we'll be adding more and more to to the product uh, as it goes on. Great. Thank you, Rob. Uh, question came in. How can I check the top crash in the last 24 hours? So that's a good question. Um, if you go to the uh, the crash summary page, um, there's a filter there for the crashes that occurred in the last 24 hours, and you can you know, sort this by number of occurrences, and that should give you a, a great way to look at that. Great. This question comes in: Are there ways or possibilities to dynamically disable criticism on the mobile app? Uh, basically, is there a way to turn it on and off by the app user? Yep, uh, there is, uh, this is probably a little hidden, but there is a way to, to do that. If you go to your app settings page, um, it'll give you a list of all the versions of the app um, that we've received data from. And you can go there and, uh, you know, if you uncheck, and you can actually specify, you know, if there's a certain version of your app that you don't care about because it was launched a long time ago uh, and you're no longer supporting that, no, no longer users are using it, 
you can turn off um, that checkpoint and then we'll stop you know storing data for that that particular version of the app um, there's also a privacy fe uh, feature within the application so there's a uh, in the API in the SDK there's an API method to set uh, opt-out status to yes or no so if you want to integrate it with a, a settings menu and application you can go ahead and allow a user to turn off sending us any any sort of uh, performance data so there's a, a couple ways to do that Great, thanks Rob. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, if you do turn off any of that data, it doesn't have any effect on the performance of the app as well. So even if you stop using a version of the app, stop sending us data, it, will have, it won't have uh, any, any performance impact. Great, thank you. Uh, Rob, we have not integrated Critter System SDK for app performance in geolocation. Can I still see the crash based on local code now? Yep, there is a way to do that. Um, if you look at the um, crash uh, details page, um, you can actually change that timeline view to a, a graph view. So you can actually see a map of the U.S. And, and, and the world and see if there's crashes occurring. We have some actually we have some great stories there. Um, one of our gaming customers actually found out that there's a crash that uh, was only occurring outside of the U.S and they found out that Apple had made a change um, with the way some of their in-app purchases worked, and it was sending back a, a, a nil value for one of, their, um, one of their responses that they weren't expecting, but only outside of the U.S. And so they saw a spike in, in crashes in their app, and they were able to drill into each crash and see that they're all occurring outside of the U.S., and they used that information to, to fix uh, some of the issues in their application. Great. Now, can we use this in a hybrid platform? Yep, uh, we do have support for a lot of um, additional platforms as well. Um, so we, you know, we currently support iOS and Android, of course. Uh, we support Android NDK. Uh, on the hybrid side, we support uh, Xamarin. So we just released uh, the Xamarin plugin. I don't think there's any other providers that have support for Xamarin today. We also launched our PhoneGap plugin uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then we also have support for Unity, uh, Windows, Phone, um, and uh, a bunch of other platforms as well. Great. Um, Rob, what is an app load, and at what point in the Android li app lifecycle is it measured? Great question. Um, so we track app load um, based on uh, when an activity, when the main activity is loaded. So when the, when criticism is initialized, um, basically it sends a small ping to our server, and then telling us you know what version of the app was running, what uh, OS was running, and um, we track that as an as an app load. Um, on the iOS side, we track both uh, foreground and background, uh, and from background um, as app loads. So. If you're just starting your app from, you know, if you just installed your app and you started the app, uh, we track that as an app load. And also, if you, you know, background the app, maybe you got a phone call and then re-foregrounded that app, we also count that as an as an app load as well. Great. Uh, this question came in. What is the typical performance impact on the mobile app with transaction enabled? So, is there any impact on CPU or uh, memory? So, like you know, anything that we do, uh, we do do performance profiling on our, on our own SDKs, just because you know we're a performance monitoring company. We can affect the performance of your app as well, and we found that you know there's been no difference in impact between uh, our SDK with with and without transactions, and you know without transactions and with transactions, we also track a lot of um, a lot of different things, um, including you know CPU usage, memory usage. Uh, we found that I think it uses about two megabytes of memory, so very low overhead, um, and that's because a lot of um, you know work that we've done on the agent side is very much you know on optimizing the um, the performance of the application. So, for example, we don't uh, we we're very event driven, so we're not pulling on the device and you know getting memory usage at any given time. Um, you know, we only send data when there is a, a performance issue with the application. We're also very, you know, cognizant of, uh, of our effect on battery life. So we only send data, for example, when the, when the battery's on, uh, when the radio's on. Um, we, we, you know, with the breadcrumbs I was talking about earlier, we don't, we only, we don't send those except when there is a performance issue. 
Uh, we also do a lot of batching as well. So if there's um, you know a, 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 serv a bunch of service calls, we combine those, and, and most we send data once every 10 seconds. Great. Uh, Rob, this is a follow-up to the, uh, the top crash in the last 24 hours. So what I'm seeing here is it's a cumulative sum of the crash of the top crash and not the last uh, isolated 24 hours. How do I view this data? Um, so th there's a, a couple ways you could do this. Um, one is uh, you could look at the you could drill into the the crash itself and see the timeline we show you know the last 30 days uh, which the crash has occurred. So you can get a sense for how often that occur that occurred in the in the last day. Um, and a lot of the times, you know, these crashes will occur, um, you know, evenly across a certain period of time, but uh, we will be adding some more filters so we can see, you know, the last crashes within the last, uh, uh, on, on an hourly basis as well, which should, uh, which should help with this, because uh, we, we've been getting requests for that as well. So, great question. Okay, that wraps it up for us. So, we have um, just... A little under an hour, so uh, everyone, thanks for attending. Uh, we will be in touch with the winner of the iPad Air. And our hope from this webinar is that you came away with new tips and tricks for using criticism, but more importantly, um, how to think about uh, mobile APM in a holistic way. So we hope this webinar was helpful. Again, the video on demand will be available, and we will be in touch uh, about the recipient of the iPad Air. Thanks, everybody.